let's start in the world of physics. And imagine you come visit me, live in San Juan Capistrano, and there's some undeveloped land near where I live. And we go walking in the hills kind of behind where I live, and you see this abandoned cabin. You think, you know what, let's walk up and explore. So you walk up closer, you notice something strange. You hear the sound of your favorite song in the background. Beat It by Michael Jackson. <laughs> you think, well, I'll explore anyways. You walk in, you smell the scent of your most beloved meal. But then as you get closer, the doors open. You look down and you see shoes that are your size, a jacket that fits you perfectly. All the books you read are on the counter. You open the fridge, it's all the snacks you like. You walk over, there's a tiny bathroom. It's the exact toiletries you use. Now, besides suspecting you're in a horror movie, <laughs> what would you think? You think somebody has prepared this in advance. There's too many things set just right for my liking and my taste. This couldn't be chance. Well, interestingly, just in the past few decades, scientists have begun to realize that the parameters in both physics and cosmology in our universe are like this cabin. They're exquisitely organized within a small range to allow the emergence and sustenance of life. So Freeman Dyson, a well-accomplished physicist, says, as we look out in the universe and identify the many accidents of physics and astronomy that have worked to our benefit, it almost seems as if the universe must in some sense have known that we were coming. You see what it means? There's, there's laws of physics and cosmology that scientists say exist like on a razor's edge. And if the laws were changed the slightest to the left or the right, the entire universe would be inhospitable to life. So it's almost like Goldilocks' porridge, that's too hot, that's too cold, just right. We seem to live in a universe that's just right for the emergence and sustenance of life. In fact, many would say it looks like a put-up job. In fact, Frederick Hoyle, an agnostic astronomer, who coined the term Big Bang. He said it almost seems as if somebody's monkeying with the laws of physics. This is why Paul Davies, a well-accomplished scientist, he says, the cliche that life is balanced on a knife edge is a staggering understatement. In this case, no knife in the universe could have an edge that fine. Now, what exactly do we mean by this? Let me, let me give you an example that might, might help. So I've mentioned that I teach at Biola University, and I went to Biola as an undergrad. And if you've ever, how many of you have been on Biola's campus at some point or another? Okay, quite a few of you have. On the back side of campus, towards La Mirada Boulevard, there's some graduate housing called Thompson and Welch and Lee. And typically, seniors are allowed in there. And my senior year, one of my friends was living there. So I went over one night and we we're hanging out. And he had this idea because where these dormitories are, they're like about the third story high. There's a parking lot, tall row of trees, a huge gutter, and then a stop sign. And my friend got the great idea that he'd have a huge bucket full of water balloons and get one of those life-size like water balloon launchers. Have you ever seen these things? That take like three people. They look like a huge rubber band. One person holds this side, the other person holds that side, and then you pull back and you put like a water balloon, an egg, a cat or something in it, you let it fly. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shameless joke, I'll own it. Don't do that to animals. But you let it go and you fling it and it can go like, I don't know, like dozens or maybe 100 yards plus if you shoot it right. Well, he would go to his window and do this and think how wonderful would it be if students are coming back, especially at night to campus, to get a welcome with a water balloon right on the windshield. Great idea, right? So we're hanging out, he goes, hey, McDowell, let's do this. Opens up his window, I remember holding one side. My other friend, who's now my brother-in-law, is holding the other side. And my buddy pulls back this water balloon and he lets it fly. Now think about how many things would have to get right to hit the target, right? There's a lot of things that could go wrong, but a lot of things that need to go right. Well, he lets it fly out the window. It goes flinging up in the air, goes across the parking lot, goes above the row of trees, clears the gutter. This small red car stops at the stop sign. Bam, smacks it right in the windshield, shatters it. She has a heart attack. No, I'm kidding. It's not that bad. It's messed up. You laughed at that, just for the record. 
it, you know, like the spider crack, it just goes up the windshield. That's how it worked. And we had to pay for it which might have been the best economic lesson I got in all of college, just for the record, right? Choices have consequences. Now think about it though for a minute. How many factors had to be just right to hit our target? What would happen if there was more water in the balloon? It would have not gone far enough. What if there was less? Probably would have gone further. What if there was more or less tension in the launcher? What if the angle was different? What if we were up in Colorado where the air was different? Like you start to think about it. There are all these different factors that have to be just right to hit our target. Well, we now know that there's tons of different factors in nature, so to speak. That if the slightest change would happen, then we couldn't have a universe even capable of supporting life. The slightest change in a number of these parameters would make everything unstable and our universe incapable of supporting life. So according to Dr. Mark Horton, he says that the balance between gravity and expansion rate were altered by one part in one million, billion, 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 billion. There would be no galaxy, stars, planets, or life. Just one factor changed by the slightest amount imaginable. And all of a sudden, we couldn't even have galaxies and planets or life. Exquisite fine-tuning. Now, this is one example. We actually know that there are over 30 physical or cosmological parameters that must be finely tuned in order for life to be possible. In fact, there's really probably many more than this. I err on the side of stating the number conservatively, but there's probably many, many more than this that have to be fine-tuned. And these are things like the force of gravity, the strong nuclear force, the weak nuclear force, cosmological constant, etc. These are different laws that govern our universe, and the slightest change, the universe becomes inhospitable to life. Now, I just gave you one example. What happens if we take two? What are the mathematical odds that both of them would be set right where they need to be set in order to have a universe capable of supporting life? So if we take the force of gravity and the cosmological constant, what are the mathematical odds that they'd be set to have a universe capable of supporting life? Well, now the number becomes 100 million trillion, 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 trillion. Now, that's a big number. If you can't grasp that number, Just think of our new national debt. (laughs) You got it? That's how bad it is. Friends, this number is so vast, it's virtually impossible that just two of these would be set where they need to be to have a universe capable of supporting life. This is why Roger Penrose says, if we combined all the laws that must be fine-tuned, we couldn't even write down that number in full. Since it would require more zeros, than the number of elementary particles in the universe. I don't have enough faith to believe this happened by chance. But what I do know when I see something fine-tuned, a very reasonable explanation is that there is a fine-tuner or a mind who has set it that way. World of physics, I think, points towards a mind 